Hello boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Pencil and Tools. Okay, so the main idea is that we transform this garage slash dumpster into a YouTube workshop. As you can see, it's a relatively small garage, but it should be enough to build a nice workshop. At the moment I'm using this to store my garden tools, a lot of junk, and of course, the best artwork that money can buy. Since it's the idea is to rebuild this from the ground up, the first thing that we're gonna do is empty out this oversized trash can. Since this project is going to take me at least a couple of weeks slash months, I'm making sure that all the stuff that's in here will have a fixed place that can remain there until the project is finished. It is a small garage, but just look at that view though, right into the garden. The ceiling and the walls are gonna receive a complete makeover as well, so anything that is attached to ceiling and walls and that might be dangerous for my work is going to be removed. So that also means this lovely bee house that I built in school. After everything has been cleaned up, I can start to use this laser to define the height differences of the floor. The laser has a screw hole which allows me to use it with any regular camera tripod. To measure the height differences on the floor, I'm setting up this tripod with the laser in one corner of the garage. I'm aligning it to 100 centimeters in height. And this will make it very easy to see the differentiation between the reference point and all the spots that I'm going to measure all over the garage. Uh, with the pencil, I'm just marking the differences so that I have a clear idea what is lower and what is higher. Any of these seemingly fragile high points need to be removed before we can continue our work. In principle it's perfectly possible to cover this stuff, but I prefer to remove it so that I have a strong foundation to work on. And of course I repeat this process for all the flaky stuff that I can find on a complete floor, making sure that I have a good start. As you can see, the transition from my flooring to this grid looks a little bit artsy fartsy, so I have to address this as well. For the edges I'm applying the same rule of thumb, any loose parts need to be removed right now. This is also an ideal time to work in cables that are going into the garden. Quickly adding some water drainage and also don't be fooled by the flip-flops because I am taking care of my safety. Nevertheless, flip-flops are not the way to go when you're working with machinery, so please don't be like me. Now that the edges have been cleaned up, it's time to install this stainless steel profile that acts as a barrier for my self-leveling concrete. But before I can install this, I need to treat the concrete with this skimmed milk and this will decrease the absorbent power of the concrete. When the concrete becomes less absorbent, there will be better fixation of the mortar to your floor. Here I'm making sure that the end of the floor is matching perfectly with the end of the ceiling. In case I want to install a door, which I will be doing, this will align perfectly with the floor. Thank you. 
before I can install my masonry rope, I'm building some quick tools that allow me to fixate the rope between the two side walls. Once again, I'm using my laser to mark off the height on both sides. And then with a spirit leveler, I'm marking off the highest point, which happens to be in the front of the garage. Now I only have to add the height of the stainless steel profile, measure the difference, and then just copy this number on the other side as well. Now I can install this masonry cord and as you can see the left side is a lot higher than the right side and this is the indication of how much I need to correct. Quick ninja tip when you're making mortar, you can add a little bit of dish soap and this will make your mortar a lot more workable. And in case you're wondering, the white stuff that I'm adding here, it's bio milk provided to me by very happy cows. The mortar has a good thick consistency and this is ideal for the dimensions that I have to fill up. Another layer of skimmed milk and we can start to apply our mortar to install the profile. Once I've built my foundation just below the level of the cord, I can gently install my profile and tap it with my fingers to meet the correct level, which is of course indicated by the cord. Once the profile has been installed and is on the correct height, I can remove any excess material that's going to be in the way for my self-leveling concrete afterwards. Now I'm gonna leave the mortar to set a little bit and then, uh, hey little buddy, how are you doing? So as I was taking my break, this little fella joined me, we ended up talking about politics, he got angry and he took off again. By providing some shade, I'm ensuring that the mortar is gonna cure slowly and good. But before anything is completely cured, I'm using a knife to remove any excess material on the back. The reason why I'm doing this now and not when the mortar was still very wet is because I wanted to make sure that my profile is going to be on the exact same height and there's quite a bit of material that I have to remove. Now I can be sure that there's going to be a nice transition between my grid and my flooring. The profile has been installed now and it is time to remove all the dust particles so we can continue and prime the floor with our skimmed milk. To apply the skimmed milk primer I'm using the spray gun and the reason why I'm using this instead of a brush or a roller is because I find it a lot easier to work with and uh, I also tend to use a lot less of the skimmed milk. Another thing you might want to consider is that with this spray gun I'm also contaminating the walls, which in my case is not a problem, but if you have to be more precise, this stuff you need to keep away from your walls because you cannot wash it off afterwards.
On the left side you will see a spot of concrete that I've repaired and as you can see it's very absorbent so this will require a couple more layers. To save some money on the self-leveling concrete I'm going to use some regular concrete to fill in this gap. With a laser, a ruler and a pencil I'm marking off the area that needs to be filled in. Also on the side walls and then I can install a masonry cord as a guidance. For this specific concrete mix I'm using smaller stones and this will allow me to apply a thinner layer of concrete. making sure that everything has a smooth finish and that the height does not exceed the height that I've indicated with my cord before. To prevent the concrete from cracking as it dries up, I'm adding a little bit of moisture with a spray gun. Of course, after the concrete has set and dried up, we have to apply the same principles to this newly formed slab as we did to the old garage floor. This means dusting everything off, and applying a new layer of primer. An easy way to test if you have applied enough primer is to just pour on some water. If any dark spots appear, then this means that the water is still being absorbed by the concrete. The water should just purl off. Now, as for the self-leveling concrete, I am not a professional. Uh, I'm quite a newbie at this stuff. So before I start finishing off the complete floor, what I've done is I've applied a couple of thin layers using different levels of water, playing around with primer, mixing speed, etc. This of course will all be explained in the next video, so if you want to learn more and learn from my mistakes so that you don't have to make them, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.